Okay, so today we're going to draw a three-view drawing of the eye block. It's called an orthographic projection. And basically it's where we take a three-dimensional object like this. So this is showing what's called um, an isometric view. Okay, where you can see three sides. You've got the front, the top, and then the left side. And the left side it consists of not only this square, but don't forget this little chunk down here. Um, now sometimes... Uh, learning to draw three view drawings of actual physical objects is a little tricky. Um, so what I'm going to do is employ uh, 3D modeling software to sort of help us with that. Um, so we'll start our drawing with just the front view of this U block. Let's look at our 3D model here. So if I roll this around, we can see our 3D object, the U block. Very simple, not much to it. What I'm going to do is just click on our front view here so it squares everything up. And there I can tell basically what the, the basic shape of the object is. Um, so now we're going to go over to AutoCAD and we're just going to draw this shape because this is, our, this is the front of the block, as I had mentioned before. So this is kind of about how we have it oriented in AutoCAD right now in the isometric view. And we're trying to draw just this front face. So let's get that started. So it's essentially, we'll start in the upper left-hand corner here, and we'll work our way down, and we'll come in and over, and we'll just kind of come around, and then the last thing we'll do is we'll draw this uh, half circle. So we want to make sure we have our object layer selected, which I do. We want to go into properties and make sure that these two items, color and line type, are set to bilayer. Make sure they're not, you know, one thing or the other. And we'll come over here and we'll start drawing. Again, yeah, we're starting in the upper left-hand corner and coming down so that that distance is 2 inches. Start here, type 2, and we're going to come in, looks like 1 inch there, and then we're going to come down this dimension right here, it says 0.5. We're going to come over, so we're, we're right now we're here, we're working our way over, so we'll go 2. Slide this over here a little bit. And we're going to come up the same distance as the other one. And we're going to come over one. And come up two. And now I could just come straight across. So we'll do that. Um, but we want to make sure that we have on our O snap things, we want to make sure we have midpoint checked off. Uh, and I do. And what we'll do is, again, we want to put in this little circle. We'll notice the center point is right in line with the top of our three-dimensional object. So keep that that way. So our center point for our circle here is going to be exactly the same. So we'll find our midpoint. Okay, and it says diameter of 2, which is also a radius of 1. And we'll just come in with our trim tool and sort of clean things up. So we're going to get rid of that. We'll get rid of that. And there we go. So this view, our front view here, now matches our front view on my 3D model. Now what we want to do is we want to do um, two more views. And again, if we look at this in, from an isometric perspective, we've got, this is a little tipped a little bit too far, sort of like about there. Again, we, we're going to represent the top and then one side. Now, the side that we're going to represent, I actually prefer to show the right side. So it's as if we took our block, we're looking at it from the front. We turned it, wrong way. We turned it so that we could actually see the right side this way. So again, we're, we're taking our front view here. And we're turning it this way. So we can actually see the actual right side. So we look at this. It's a basic rectangle, and there's one line going through it, okay, in terms of visible stuff. But in each view of our orthographic projections, we need to make sure that we represent all of the geometry present in this object. So if we look at our right side view here, so again, this is our right side, so we've got this square and then this rectangle. What are we missing? Well, this square sort of represents the whole body. The bottom portion shows these, these two cutouts, this one and this one, because they line up in our view. The only thing we're missing is this little uh, cylindrical cutout. So think of this as an incomplete cylinder, um, similar to like a, like a soup can would be a great example 
um, of what this particular shape is. So again, it's a cylinder. We've kind of sliced it down the top. So if you took a soup can, stood it straight up, and then just sliced it right in half, that's exactly what we have, only it's the absence of material. So it's that but the opposite, for lack of a better term. So now what we're going to do, we're going to draw our basic shape. And then, like I said, we need some way of representing that cutout. So we'll take a look at that in a second. Now, when we do our, th our three-view orthographic projections, I think from the eye block, if you remember, um, we also spent a lot of time concentrating on how we line up our views. So we're going to continue to do that here. So what I'm going to do is just draw a line straight over from here. Straight over from this corner. And then straight over from this corner. I'm just going to draw a vertical line here. It doesn't really matter where, but make sure it's vertical. Okay. So our view is going to be right here. And how wide is this side view? Well, take a look. Let's flip this around to the front. So the width of our view is actually the depth of our front view. So if we take a quick look at our isometric drawing, we're looking for depth here, so we need to know how wide is this view. Well, that's measured right here with this number two. That's measured right here with this. So we're going to take this line and we're going to offset it over two inches. Modify, offset, select our line, and then just type two. Now, all we need to do now is come in with the trim tool and clean things up. So we're going to remove our connectors here, remove the excess from the top, excess from the bottom, and the excess from the right side. So now we have our basic right side view and our front view done. We're just missing, we're not representing this, again, it's like a half a cylinder here. Um, so what we want to do is think about, okay, how do I represent this? Well, that's where our other line types come in. So if we look at our layers. We've got a, a layer called hidden. What that does is it represents edges or curves, um, sharp edges or curves, of things that aren't visible in that view but need to be represented. So it implies that they are behind the face of the object that we are currently working on. So we look in our 3D parts studio, we, we know that, hey, there's something there, but we can't really see it. Um, so there's various methods of, of changing how things are seen on here. Let's see if I can change our view here. Uh, we'll alter that later. But we do know that, hey, we need to represent this somehow. Maybe I select it. Let's do that. So if we look at the lines that compromise that piece of geometry, or that comprise that piece of geometry, sorry, we've got our very outside edges, and those are already solid lines. So if I were to draw a hidden line over top of that, we wouldn't actually see it when we printed it out. We just have solid lines. However, right here, the very bottom edge, you notice that it's creating a straight line. So think about if you were to draw a two-dimensional drawing of a soup can that was standing up and down, it would probably just be a rectangle. Okay, it, just a, again, just a basic cylinder. We're not showing any level of detail there. It would just be a rectangle. So if you were to turn that rectangle on its side, again, still a rectangle, and then remove the top half, we would get this exact shape, which is still a rectangle. So all we need to do to represent that piece of geometry that's missing is draw a hidden line right at the very bottom of that cutout. So that's what we're going to do here. Best way I've found to do that is we're going to select our hidden line. Again, make sure the line type is correct. Go to properties, make sure everything says by layer. And we will select our line tool. We're just going to draw right from the very bottom here. Let's draw our line across. And you see our different hidden line type is showing up. And then just come in with the trim tool. We'll just remove the chunks of the line that we don't need. There we go. So our right side view is now complete. Let's take a look at what we need to do for our top view, which is going to go, because it's our top view, it's above the front. Let's take a look. Flip that around. Click on front. 
Again, we're, we're looking at our front view here. And we want to look at our top view now. So I'm just going to flip this. I'm going to look straight down at the top. So what is visible here? Well, we've got a rectangle here. We've got our circular cutout. But again, if we think about the soup can analogy, if we're looking straight on at the cylinder, there's no curvature that you can see. It's just it's just essentially a rectangle when you flatten the, the cylinder. And we've got another rectangle. So basically it's, it's a square, a two-inch square here. Uh, a one inch by two inch rectangle and another one inch by two inch rectangle. And again, to kind of save myself from having to type some lines, first of all, let's flip over to our visible layer, our object layer here. Rather than typing out letters, and, or sorry, rather than typing out numbers, I'm going to draw a line straight up from any corner along the top because we're drawing our top view. I think we're drawing straight up because this view should be located above our front view, just like our right view is to the right of our front view. The top view should be on top of the front view. We'll continue that. Okay. And then we'll do our third right here. Okay, and then all we need to do is just draw a horizontal line wherever we want our top view to start. And then we're going to offset that. Again, the depth of our drawing. So the depth here is 2 inches. So we'll click Offset. And type 2. And hit Enter. Now these lines don't quite make it there. So we can just stretch them straight up. We'll just overlap them. No reason not to. And we will... These just barely overlap, so... Start by trimming those so we don't forget. Don't want to miss them. We'll do that. We'll just trim out here and here. All right. So this is complete as is. However, some of you might be saying, well, we're, we represented this cylinder. What about the bottom down here? So one thing to, to note, yes, if this bottom was a little bit wider, we would need to put hidden lines in. However, it just happens to line up exactly with the edge of our cylinder. So, again, because we have object lines here, it would overlap the hidden lines and we wouldn't be able to see the hidden lines. But, if this base were a little narrower or a little wider, we would need to represent it with hidden lines. However, this is all we're looking for for this drawing. 